Um, and like I said, I don't think there's a whole lot I need to do beyond our lecture today to prep you for this lab. Um, I think, where's, where's Candace? Um, we, you should be in decent shape for this. Um, and it brings up the ideal gas law. Um, but again, and it's, I believe it's, it's mostly going to be, um, you know, drawing some graphs that are sort of like the ones that we looked at um, in class today. Um, so let me, um, so it's going to have you sort of predict what happens when you increase pressure, when you decrease pressure, what's going to happen to the volume, things like that. And it kind of gives you a little bit of context as a, um, gives you a storyline to it, although it's not super, you know, in depth or anything. Um, and then I, it has you make what it calls an arbitrary temperature scale, which is just going to be an, a temperature scale that starts at absolute zero, but you can kind of, you can pick whatever you want to be the temperature markings from there. It doesn't really make a difference for these gas laws, as long as it start at zero is absolute zero. Zero is the point when you've got zero volume and zero pressure. Um, Beyond that, it might have you do a little bit of, of the um, ideal gas law concept, um, by which I mean the PV equals NRT version. Uh, um, where, so it might ask you, you know, to predict things like, OK, well, what happens if we look at the equation? Um, and again, the normal form of it is PV equals NRT. Um, if what, hap what would we expect to happen to temperature if we increase the number of moles, for instance? Well, that's, that's a little bit tricky to, to see off the top of your head. But if, if you're keeping pressure and volume constant, if you increase N, then T has to go down make this still happen. And you can always, anytime they ask you a hypothetical like this, um, you can always just make up some numbers and do a test. Like you can say, okay, well, what happens if your molds goes up? What happens to temperature? You can just plug one in for everything. You say, okay, one atmosphere, one liter equals one mole, times R, which is a constant, times, um, I'll just pick 100 Kelvin, just for the sake of practicing this here. And let me go to the stop screen share here. Um, if you do that, or you, you can do that and then say solve for T. And then if you do the same thing, if you plug in one atmosphere, one liter, and double the moles, two moles times R times T, what we should see is that since R is a constant, if you double moles, temperature should be half of what it was to start with. If everything else is being held constant, you can always just plug in random numbers and solve for temperature and see what happens when you change the number of moles. Right, so you can, you don't have to be able to follow the, the algebra of it necessarily to be able to predict what's going to happen based on equation. If you get a big equation like this, somewhat convoluted, just test it out with a couple of test points. Just make up some numbers and see what happens, right? And I don't think you need to do any of the calculations, but if you wanted to do um, the calculations for this, just for your own knowledge, um, value of R we're going to be using is based on, um, based on, you have to have this right standard units, which we use um, liters and atmospheres. Uh-uh, up, down. Mm -hmm. And the units on it, the units on it are tricky. They don't really mean anything, but they tell you what you need the rest of your variables to be in. It's liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. 
right? So, and like I said, I don't think you have to do any of the actual calculations and get any numbers for this lab. And if you do, they will give you this value as well. Um, but just for you, this is so you've seen it. And because we're going to keep using this all over the place, basically our standard procedure, um, because you can basically look, there's a million different versions of R with different combinations of units. So what's the most helpful in my mind is um, to always use the same units. And then you just have to do some conversions before you plug into the equation. Um, as opposed to having to look up a different value of R for every different, every possible combination of units. Because if you use, if you use millimeters of mercury instead of atmospheres, it's going to be a different value. But this equation is the same. If you use gallons instead of liters, it's going to be a different number. If you use, I uh, can't really use anything but moles and Kelvin on the bottom, but uh, it just makes things a lot simpler. You only have to remember one number and some conversions as opposed to looking up a new number every time. Um, and this one is on your equation sheet as well. And that's, and just for any time, you know, three out of these four variables, there's, sorry, there's, there's five letters here, but R is a constant, R is always this value. So if you know any other three of these four, you can solve for the fourth one. Right, so if you know moles and temperature and volume, you can solve for pressure. If you know pressure and volume and temperature, you can solve for moles. If you know pressure and moles and temperature, you can solve for volume. It's just a matter of plugging in and rearranging, doing the algebra to actually solve for it. Right, so it's, it's a really useful equation and we'll keep practicing with it. Um, but I don't think that you're gonna have to go too in depth um, for any of the, Part of the lab, but for some of the um, homework problems, um, you will have to do some calculations. And again, the homework's not due till Wednesday, uh, and you'll have a whole nother lecture to ask questions and do practice problems for gas laws on Monday as well. I have a question Anna? about that. Yeah. Uh, so am I also going to receive another, am I going to receive another assignment to do that's due on Sunday? And then this one so, will be due Wednesday? Um, so this Sunday, all you have to do is the quiz. I need to fine tune the questions, make sure that it doesn't go over anything we haven't gotten to yet, but you will have a quiz this weekend and that's it for Sunday. Okay. Next week, you'll have the lab and, and the homework assignment that are due Wednesday. And then I won't give you another assignment on top of that because that's what, next week's our last week of lectures. So sometime over the weekend, I'll give you your practice test and that's your last homework assignment. This weekend? Is, uh, yeah, but it won't be due this weekend. It'll be due during finals week. You'll have, um, I'll give it to you over the weekend so that you can ask questions about it next week. Okay. Um, but it won't be due till finals week. I try not to stack the assignments up on you guys too badly. Okay. Cool. Thanks. All right. Um, yeah, and then I don't think we have a new lab for next week. I think maybe there was one slated there, but with the assignments backing up, I think I'll probably just cut that one. So you'll have you only have 10 labs and this will be your last lab assignment that'll be due next Wednesday. And then you can just focus on the final for the next, um, after that. All right, well, I'll let you guys get started on this then. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be here till, till at least five um, in this Zoom. Um, but uh, if I don't see you, then I'll see you on Monday. I have a question. <laughs> so I have a question on the homework and I'm kind of confused because I'm looking at the key and um, I understand that the carbon and the oxygen will go together, but and then I had hydrogen by itself which it's 10 H2O, but I don't understand that. So let me, let me pull up the homework. Which, which problem in particular are you working on? Problem one, about just balancing it and writing the products. Yeah, so this is, you're gonna be using PV equals NRT um, for these, because we can basically treat, because these gases don't interact with each other, mm -hmm. we can basically treat them as though they're totally separate. If you have moles of oxygen, you can figure out how many, um, how many atmospheres of oxygen you have 
for instance. So you don't, so we're just going to be using PV, you get, you're going to be using this equation, PV equals NRT for each of them. And initially for, for all of them, you're going to have 10 liters is going to be your volume. Mm -hmm. And you have a starting number of grams of butane and a starting grams of oxygen. And you can figure out how many, if you know, so then you have, that gives you everything you need to get to um, moles, because you can go grams to moles, right? Just use the molecular weights. Yeah, what I'm having trouble with is actually just coming up with the correct product for the equation, because oh. I just had like carbonate, I think it is. Let me look. Yeah, carbonate plus hydrogen. Like I didn't do water at the end. As so well. you try to treat it as some kind of like a um, an acid base reaction maybe but so remember every combustion reaction mm -hmm. is going to make water co2 and water so the the key word the word there that was that it says okay. it's a combustion yeah sorry no it's okay all right cool and then i don't have any questions um but i was just wondering like pH, did we cover that last week, right? With the stoichiometry? And on Monday. And, okay, cool. Um, and that's going to be like a pretty large portion of the final, correct? 10% probably. Okay. Um, I did have a question because there was um, a point in the lecture today where you wrote pH equals H, what it was it? pH equals H, I wrote it down somewhere, I can't remember, but I was kind of a little confused by that. So this is our definition. This is what pH is. This pH, P just stands for take the negative log of something. Okay. So if we have extra H pluses floating around in water, they're always in the form of H3O plus. So we write it like this. Mm -hmm. um, so all you need to do, if you can get the concentration of H3O plus, all you have to do is take the log of it and then flip the sign on whatever you get. So am I just, because maybe the equation doesn't explicitly have H3O in it, right? I have to do some stoichiometry to get the H3 out of there, H3O, or? I mean, kind of, it, let me phrase this properly. You, you do, but it's one-to-one -one stoichiometry. The stoichiometry is really, really straightforward. At this mm -hmm. point, we're not dealing with anything tricky. We're only dealing with strong acids. And if okay. you have a strong acid, um, then, and for instance, so HCl is a strong acid. If you said the concentration of HCl is 0 0.100 molar, uh -huh. because it's a strong acid, when you put it in water, 100% of the time, it basic the HCl gives away the H plus to water. And so you can yeah. essentially, if it's a strong acid, you can just say the concentration of your strong acid is your concentration of H3O plus. So anytime that water is a base and there's a hydrogen molecules or atoms, what would I say? Molecules, right? Or um, if you have hydrogen ion. <laughs> hydrogen ions. Okay. Um, Water's going to take them. Basically, yeah. If it's a strong acid, that means it's so good at giving away those H pluses that water always takes them. Okay. So whatever whatever acid you have around, you can just say that your concentration of acid is the same thing. Oh, okay. So there's no math involved with it. It's just knowing what a strong acid is, really. Okay. And then, so that makes this part really easy, right? Because as soon as you can get if you have this, if this is your excess reactant for, for whatever problem you're looking at, then you just have to find the concentration of your excess reactant and then plug it in as your concentration of H3O plus. Okay. And I had one more question. So I find the excess reactant, I do a subtraction, and then I'm left with what would I be left with? That's what I'm confused with for when I'm finding the pH? So if you, I'll just make, make one up and I'm just gonna start with it in moles. Okay. Um, 
So if you have HCl plus NaOH, that's going to react to give you water and NaCl. If I have you know, 0.5 moles of HCl and I have 0.4 moles of NaOH, mm -hmm. and let's say that this is we are going to need to put it in concentrations eventually. So let's just say that all of this is happening in one liter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 0.5 moles of this, this, just looking at that, we can say, okay, well, I know I've got extra HCl, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're being used up at the same rate. So whatever I have more of is my excess. Mm -hmm. If I want to know the final concentration of HCl, so then I just take whatever's left, and that's the subtraction that you said. Mm -hmm. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 mm -hmm. divided by our volume, which is in this case just one liter for the sake of making math easy. Yeah. So I, I think that you're following this part fine, but I don't want to misinterpret your question. <laughs> And just yeah. for since this is this is being recorded, so that people anybody else can follow what we're doing, okay. um, if, if they might be struggling like this. Um, so our final concentration then is just 0 0.1 moles per liter. To get that to pH, all yeah. we're going to do is take the negative log of this number. Okay. All right, so as if you have excess acid, finding a pH is easy. You take concentration of whatever's left and you take the negative log of it and you're done. Okay. If you have excess hydroxide, there's one extra step. Because if you have excess hydroxide, then instead of, so let's say if we made this 0.6 instead of 0.5 or 0.4, mm -hmm. then you don't have excess acid you have excess base. And so what you're going to do instead to get to pH is you want to find pOH. And pOH is negative log of hydroxide concentration. Okay. So same basic principle, you're going to find your concentration of your excess reactants and take the negative log of it. But when you take the negative log of it, you're getting POH. So negative log, um, in this case with the new numbers, our POH would be 0 0.1 molar. Okay. And then there, it's a quick subtraction once you do that because POH, pH plus POH always adds up to 14 in water. So then you so, just plug in, so solve for pH plus that. Yeah, this is kind of what I was confused about. So subtract 0 0.1, the log, the negative log of 0 0.1 from 14, and then that gives you your pH. Exactly. Okay. exactly. So <laughs> it's just one extra step if the base is left over. If the acid's left over, you don't need to do this. Okay. If the base is left over, then you need to find the pOH first and then do the subtraction, and then you're there. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. No problem.